greetings. This is the Ghetto Free Press. And it is April the 21st, 2014. Here on Ashley Street is where Kendrick Johnson's parents and relatives and friends and supporters have gathered for over a year now. Seeking and expecting justice concerning the death of their son, Many unanswered answered questions are still pending here in Valdosta, Lowndes County, and in the state of Georgia. They have been criticized, belined, and in some cases, damn. Yet they continue to stand for justice. Standing to try to find out what actually happened to their son on January the 10th and 11th, <clears throat> on January the 10th and 11th, 2013. And you know, on Friday, Lula Smart, one of the equipment 10 plus 2, had her day in court over in Brooks County before 12 jurors and only one black was on that jury. This is what we see over and over again across America. Whites can sit and judge blacks, but blacks cannot sit and judge whites on an equal basis. This is not playing the race card. This is a fact of reality. And all one has to do is to check the archival record. No need of, no need of finger pointing. History speaks for itself. And if I may ask the people of the state of Georgia, when have you seen a majority jury? But even more saddening than that, when have you ever seen an all-black jury sitting and judging whites? Now, if that is the truth, then it's just the truth. But did you not know that this case in Quitman concerning the alleged voter fraud was started by what they claimed to be was a spike in absentee ballots received in 2010 election. 1,400. But look, I said from day one that the law had changed in Georgia wherein anybody could vote by absentee ballots. But you never saw that question asked in your newspapers, did you? But I asked it from day one. Why didn't they define who could vote by absentee ballots? You didn't see that on TV, radio, nor television. But I stated it in my blog, and you can go see on kvci.blogspot.com. That was my question then, and that is my question now. And so after they requested the investigation and the, uh, and the arrest of 10 outstanding citizens in Brooks County, many of them, most of them educators. Some of them even have a PhD or have a PhD pending. But that didn't matter, you see, because for the first time in Brooks County history, that election gave blacks a majority on the Brooks County Board of Education. Now don't blame me for speaking about race. That is a fact of reality. And I did create that. That was way before I was born. Now, what you don't know about that case, although it was the second mistrial, the first mistrial was granted, granted by Judge Lane on, eight, on the uh, 18th of April, 
The second mistrial was granted by Richard Porter. And now we all see that the equipment 10 plus 2 case has gotten, has become so much deeper than just equipment 10 plus 2 because now we are seeing a hand or hands behind the hand of a man with a master plan to put these outstanding citizens in jail or in prison. But look, the, per, the man that works in the United States Post Office, the man that worked in the United States Post Office mishandled, as came out in the trial, personal mail and released information from this mail to a person that he say he didn't hardly even know. And so now the question is, had they not said anything and just plea bargained their case, they could have ended up in jail a long, long time ago. So today what we are going to talk about is a, an attorney that served on the Brooks County School Board of Education, paid money, took money out of his own pocket, and paid for a private investigator to come in and spy on someone as came out in the trial. Now look, 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 look. I didn't create this scenario. This was done without my help. Moreover, the registrar took ballots from a tax-funded building where she works to her home. Now, the question is, why haven't the state of Georgia questioned and possibly took actions on those absentee ballots that she took? Was that also mishandling absentee ballots? Going to get better in a minute. She deputized two people that I employed at the Brooks County Board of Education, or of elections rather, where they was in the tax office really. And they helped her with the high volume of absentee ballots received for the year 2010. But she also deputized her granddaughter and paid her granddaughter for assisting in that job. So during the trial, the defense asked the question, did she advertise that job to all the citizens so anybody could have applied for that position or so they could have gotten the best qualified person? After all, you know, that's what they say now. We want the best qualified. Look, it seems now as if the Equipment 10 case has become so deep now that somebody needs to investigate the very basic and foundation of why the Secretary of State, along with the District Attorney David Miller and others, found it necessary to bring up all of these alleged charges for absentee voter fraud, or was it just that somebody didn't like the Board of Education in Brooks County being a majority black board. Now look, if you just focus on Brooks County, you still may do yourself a disservice. Brother Ryan, why you ask that question? Or why do you say that? Because the Madison 8 was also brought up on charges in the same manner. And across the state of Georgia, and now that we are looking into it a little deeper, it seems as if though there's a pattern and practice across this nation 
to weaken the black Americans' vote here in the United States of America. I did not say that. The late Senator Robert Brown spoke on that on several occasions. The Representative Tyrone Brooks has spoken on this on many occasions. The former NAACP State of Georgia President Elder DuBose have said the same things. President of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference still has said the same things. Reverend Joseph Lowry and the People's Agenda also have expressed the same points of view. Yet, you don't know what happened at Lula Smart Trial because that seemingly a click and those among the slicks have made it possible to keep the people in Valdosta, Quitman, and Brooks County, and South Georgia, and the state of Georgia ignorant concerning all the abnormalities and apparently violations of the law away from everyday common folk. That means that as long as they control the news media and keep the truth from getting to the masses of the people, then they can continue to do what they always have done. And therefore they will look like the righteous when in truth there is a hand or hands behind the man or woman with the master plan. And so we are living now when we are calling on the pastors, we are calling on the imams in Islam, we are calling on the rabbis in Judaism, we are calling on the monks, and we are calling on you, Democrat, Republican, Independent, Green Party, or no party at all, to stand up for what is right and just under our form of government in the United States of America. Or we might as well stop telling our children that we are living in the land of the free, in the home of the brave. And therefore, there may be a great possibility that our children should not fight these wars in foreign nations to protect their rights while we, after 498 years, are still living and being mistreated in ways that should not be in 2014. And so I close by saying to you, there is something happening in our world and it's all on time. God have called this day. God have called a new breed of people today. White people now are intermarrying with black folk, whether we like it or not. They now have interracial children who have gone to college and applying for a job and they are now seeing that impediments are put up for their children and now they're beginning to feel the real heartbeat of the pain that some Americans have had to go through for centuries. And so as they begin to tell their stories to the world, just much, just maybe foreign nations, foreign nations around the world will get a clearer picture of what a real democracy looked like. And so, I want to thank the Quitman 10 plus 2 for not plea bargaining. You young folk who plea bargains and find yourselves in jails and prisons, stand up when you're right. Stand up when you're right. God is calling us to stand up for what is right. There is no need of going to church 
if you can't stand up? Why waste God's time while you pretend? You dip in church. Our pastors dip in church. I dip in church. When I duplicate Jesus, imitate Muhammad, placate the son of Abraham and Yoshebel, Moses and others, but when it comes down to standing up for what is right in God's world, we punk out under pressure as if though we fear man as we should fear God. And so I want to say to you today, whatever you do and wherever you go, stand up for what is right. This is what Kendrick Johnson and Jacqueline has done. This is what the equipment 10 plus 2 has done. And in that scenario of the equipment 10 plus 2, only one black man was with them. Because we men folk have failed in our responsibility to stand up with our women, our mothers, our sisters, and our aunties. And we now let the women take the stage while we go and watch a football game or while we go out and entertain a woman, entertain a woman when we should be entertaining our children and the God of the universe. I'm gonna leave you now. May God bless you. And before you condemn me, of course you're welcome to, because we must understand that if you say nothing, nobody condemns you. If you just go to church and talk about how holy you are and how close you are to God and prophesy and prophesy lie and play these silly games that even children know are games, nobody gonna call you the dirty names that they call Jesus and the other prophets, priests, and kings who travel that great line of holy divine. But when you stand up for what is right in a wicked world, and you seek to save our children from the jails, prisons, and death row, then they're going to call you everything but a child of God. And so please, don't think that I'm angry because I speak the way that I speak. But I am indeed tired of seeing people play with the God of our ancestors who brought us from a mighty long ways. And it is indeed time now for the Postal Service to take action. Can you imagine somebody worked for the Post Office for 18 years and never heard of the Privacy Act and how to protect personal mail? Can you imagine a person working for the state and not knowing that taking uh, uh, well, uh, 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 personal information away from a lot location approved by the county and city and state government into their own homes? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that. So as a retired military veteran, I'm asking all people that wear the uniform to follow the equipment 10 plus 2. Follow the Kendrick Johnson case. Follow my over 300 days on the criminal trespass without ever being issued a trespass form as was issued in Thomas County. They don't issue those passes apparently in Lyons County, but they issue them in Thomas County. And I'll be showing you that form pretty soon. And then in spite of all of that, nobody have come to me about this criminal trespass warning and you all who visit Valdosta, Lowndes County in the state of Georgia, you must understand that we are apparently under a set of laws that can be put in place and abolished at the stroke of a pen or a phone call over a Lowndes County Sheriff Deputy Radio. So we can look at me who have violated no law 
21 years in the United States Armed Forces, only got one le le uh, 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 letter of counseling, and I got that one removed. And they're going to put me under a criminal trespass warrant for nothing? And nobody in the Southern judiciary has said anything about it. No news media have interviewed me. No news media have published my story, nor the 14-year-old girl incident at Pine Grove Middle School, although the mother and father gave all the news media documents and told them, informed the general public, they refused to do it, just like they refused to report on the equipment 10 plus 2 mistrial case. But then again, I guess you say, who really cares anymore? Who really cares? We are going down the road of ancient Rome anyway. So why should we care? Should we not care about the nation that our brothers, sisters, and fathers gave their very lives to protect? Well, this is the Ghetto Free Press. And I'm doing what I do. And I have a long record. And just maybe one day, just maybe one day, they may force people to dig deep into what I have done since 1975 and maintain a documented record. Just maybe one day somebody will interview me or maybe they will look upon the information that I've, I've gathered. Then again, there are people who are working now to let the people know that if we are to remain a republic, we must stand up for what is right in God's world before the light turns red and everybody will be forced to say, well, as it was in ancient Rome, the people get where they just don't give a damn. They just give up. They don't fight anymore as the people that came before them fought. And so you're not worthy to have freedom and justice in your town, in your state, or in your nation because you didn't care about nobody outside of yourself. You just wanted your friends and loved ones to have a big banking account while you said to everybody else, we don't care about your injuries, your pain, and your suffering. As long as I got mine, you don't have to have yours, and I don't care about you. Yet we are staying in the church, the mosque, and the synagogue, and we will continue to play our games. But you see, when the real Jesus come, and when the real Jehovah come, you're going to ask, what happened to my children? Why is my generation and my lineage so sick? What have fallen upon all of my siblings? You see, the Bible talks about when you mistreat someone, it can fall upon coming generations. Oh, you may miss it, but in your lineage, somebody will pay for the wrong they've inflicted upon others that are called children of God. Once again, the Ghetto Free Press. Bye-bye.